Hey, I'm Kathleen Gamer, and welcome back to PCM21. It's crew mode. We're on episode 16. We're at the GP Crunch. We need a top 10 in this one. It's our last sponsor objective that we have until we get into the signing period just a few days away. Now, I should have had really good race day condition coming into this one. Uh, for the simple really fact that the tomorrow is far, the start the of the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. And most of my team has that set as their objective. The entire group, the entire squad here, all have 98-99% fitness. Ravenko, I think, is the lowest at 96 this race, but I do have two guys that are already on fitness peaks, so they should be sitting on plus twos. So as a group, we should have a plus four. However, uh, it's raining really hard. The weather is downright awful today, and that's giving everybody in the field a minus one. So instead of having a plus four base race day condition, you subtract so minus three is what we should have. Unfortunately, we've drawn a minus eight, so it's even worse. Uh, Ravenko in particular, as we make our way up this climb, you can see he's really struggling on a minus five resistance, normally 62. But subtract eight from that and subtract eight from his stamina. His flat rating, his climbing are all greatly affected. Also, we had another objective in which Uribe picked up a stage win, and that was what we needed there. And most of our top riders were at this other race. So as we go into our signing period, as soon as this race is complete, I come into this one with a challenge. And the challenge being, can I still manage to get a top 10 with a significantly weaker team, who now added to that difficulty is well below the race day condition that was expected of them. We had a breakaway that had six minute gap. It's already down inside two minutes just over these last couple of climbs. Peloton, 113 riders. riders. Ground, Let's look too eke out a little a more performance out of these guys as we continue through bunch. this undulation all the way towards the finish. 90 kilometers left to go. Peloton already shrinking, 112 riders. It's not a star-studded field that's to our advantage well, this is really strung out this is going to be a problem for Businov can he make his way back most of the way at least before we hit this next climb which is going to hurt him a lot I suspect goodness, everyone else escaped unhurt. okay Ravenko Grego done Otto back to Otto okay it's Phytosa who's now going to be protected by Gusinyov Yes, he is definitely our leader today. Uh, Raylanu or Deluna? Oh, definitely Raylanu. Deluna is the other. Like Gusinov is going to take over as soon as Zervis is done. Down to 101 riders. The eight the in the break are now at two rate. minutes. Some teams can't be happy with it's the coming back away. again. Somebody's taking a tumble in the main bunch. Not worried about a high finish. Just trying to make sure we get that top ten. Not that it matters, we have a 100% evaluation, but they tell me get top 10, so I go for it. Okay, Zervis, fading. He was protecting Raylanu. Let's go ahead and switch that up. And then Zervis, set him to auto. We'll be out the back here shortly. The pack is 93 and counting. Away. 92. Just about over the top here. There's a collective ball with several riders on the ground. We can only hope that they all get back up. And we're down to 83. Zervis among those who has dropped. Riders. Itosa, now we'll set you to an 81. 83 for 
Raylanu, keep an eye on these guys. Gusunyov is going to need to gel up fairly soon. We're down to two climbs plus the uh, punchy finish. So actually, this is really time to step it up. And I would imagine there's a fair bit of tempo that's going to be happening. So Gusunyov, we're going to need to gel up soon. He's not going to last very long. 31.5k to go overall. A few riders attacking off, but the... The pursuit is hot and heavy, so there's no chance to really get off the front right now. Down to two riders off the front and a one minute gap. And again, tempo is very high right now. Approach the top on this one. Several riders are on the ground. The last two riders are split off. We caught one of them. Last man is down to 50 seconds of an advantage. Gusinyov is, is done, but he's still here. The Luna is pretty much done, but he's still here. Oh, De Luna goes down. The Luna's out. Oh, a rider has By himself. Fortunately, nobody went down with him. Okay, he's up. He did the electric slide. And we're down to three as we approach this final climb. Pace feels like it just lifted a little bit, but at least the guy out front is only picking up a few seconds. Okay, we're going to get a lead out. Kusinyov, we will make a move beginning on this next climb. And let's look a little closer at the finishing profile. It's up, it's down, it's up again. The I expect there to be a rise in tempo in an attempt to attack. I think we want to just counter because we want to be set up for the final climb. Just go a little harder. Okay, here comes that attempted attack. I see right, Raylanu right on our wheel, but I do not see... Ooh, oh, oh, Raylanu's done. Or Gusinyov, that is. On to Raylanu. Kaitosa. Lost his wheel briefly. The pack is back on level terms with the breakaway group. Those guys up front aren't going to be making too many friends today. Lost a little bit of his oomph to make that up, but we're in good shape for that top 10. There's only 44 left in the peloton for one thing. Uh, Gusinyov got dropped. Take care of that. He's out. Now we can really start pushing 4.6k. No breakaway. Winner definitely coming out of this group. Raylanu, okay, Descender. A lot of guys should have those minus ones today, not just us. Down to 42. By Tosa. By Tosa has lost the wheel there briefly. Raylanu leading him out. 1.4k. Raylanu, his sprint ongoing. Now by Tosa. 600 meters. Top 10. Eh, iffy. Uh, I think he that's more than 10 riders just ahead of us. Padoon takes the win. He can thank his teammates who let him out Ceseda. in And yeah, I think we're just missing the top 10 or just, 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 nope. 11th. It's 11th. Ah, of course. Well, it didn't matter. Really didn't matter, but. One position off. Oh, we didn't do anything wrong there. Those just aren't our punchy guys. Our punchy guys were at the other race. And I knew it was going to be a challenge today. We came close. Oh, Zervis goes down. All right. Uh, Tour of Utah. Not worried about it. Let's go ahead and go straight to the signing period. Based on our limitations, I can't say that we're going to make Continental Pro this coming season, though it is possible. I'm thinking we're going to still come up a little bit short. We'll be in Continental for one more year. But through development, I would suspect that maybe by next season we'll be pushing Continental Pro. 
At the moment, though, August 1st, as we enter the period, we sit 37th. We are nearly at three stars. You can see just how close we are. Uh, I love that you now get a more accurate representation of where each team is in terms of tenths of a point in, uh, for those stars. Uh, I mean, you can see we're still only a two and a half star squad, but we're at like 2.8 or 2.9. So, you know, we're we're inching close. And at the moment, that would put us just inside Continental Pro. Our expiring contracts, Raylanu, Zervis, they're both... 29, 31 years of age, respectively. It's just too old to return. They don't have any room to progress. Plus, Gerardo, who has no potential. So those are the three guys that are leaving us at the end of this season. That means we now have 12 riders at $39,300 per month. We have a budget this coming season of $103,000. So... That's 63700 to play with. So we got 64 k And with 12 riders, we only need to sign four to maybe seven. And as you look at the dossiers, we're going to have more to choose from than that. I used 59 of the 60 dossier points. There was one or two scouting reports that hadn't come back yet that I ended up uh, pushing through where I was still waiting on results from people. I only ended up with one dud. Hiroshi Oda, a 1-2 potential. Uh, we're not going to be bothering with him. But other than that, we could potentially go after all of these riders, and we only need maybe six. And I've got 10 on the list that are all 3-6 potential or better. I'm going to start with our 5-8s. Uh, you could also see, though, in terms of points, in terms of availability, the best we could even get near at our level, at our team reputation, Kevin Rivera, 72. A couple 71s, a bunch of 70s. Now, that's going to go to top end of what we have right now, but that's not going to elevate us to a new level. Which is why I'm not necessarily worried about having to go after Kevin Rivera, first and foremost, to try to get the best guy we can get. He does have enough interest to be in the yellow, but it might cost me extra. He doesn't have the highest potential, so we're not going to put everything on the line to sign him. But Martin Pluto, on the other hand, 5'8 potential, 71 overall already, regional reputation already. As a Latvian writer, Martin Pluto is literally from the first nation at the top of the list of what is available. 29 nations with a 1,000 or more UCI points at the time that we started the series. Ranked number 30, just under a 1,000 points, is Latvia. So uh, the fact that there are some Latvians available it doesn't surprise me that they are amongst the best that we could get our hands on 24 years of age so he's already leveled up a fair number of times i, I wouldn't even be surprised if he's already level seven or eight this is not going to be your carry us to the world tour kind of sprinter this is a guy who's already started in the low 60s probably to get up to the 71 he's at He's not going to be leveling up as fast either since he's already picked up a fair number of levels. But he's still a high potential and young rider and will boost the squad and shouldn't cost us very much. And there you go. We signed him for just 3000 so he is quite the bargain deal. We're going to have him for three years. And at the very least, he's a good lead-out rider. Another Latvian, but just 20 years of age, so he's going to be much lower in the scale of, of levels. That he's already achieved probably only three four or five levels in and a 70 so he's not far behind where his uh, countryman was puncher though 72 and i've already got a number of punchers but you know what at this point we're just trying to build a squad for the future so if i have a bunch of punchers i have a bunch of punchers we're going to have more budget to play with we're going to be able to sign good young talent why not and it's just 3500 this could be one of the good ones. Amazingly, I found three Latvians with 5'8 potential, again at 20 years of age, and this is probably the primary guy, the one we're going to care the most about. Stage Racer, 70 overall already, 71 Mountain already. Stamina, Resistance, Recovery are all decent for a young rider. Can't be more than a few levels into his career. So this guy 
could be a big time leader for us. If he's just 70 and 20 years of age, I mean, we're not talking about somebody who's going to reach an 80 overall, but at a 77 or a 78 overall by the time he gets to his top end, that's still a pretty solid rider who's going to be strong, at least for Continental Pro. And he signed for minimum. Wow. My next target is another 5'8 potential, and we signed him for the minimum. Just a 67 sprinter, so he's not much right now. But at 20 years of age, he's got many levels ahead of him. and could be quite good. Uh, it will certainly be better than Aribe, I would imagine, by the time he's done leveling up. I went ahead and grabbed the final 5'8 potential guy that we have on our list. This one's a little stri a bit of a stretch for me. I wouldn't normally go this low, but we're still a Continental team. And at just 19 years of age, I think Balage is a first year uh, rider. So he's probably only level one or level two at this point. So he should level up quite quickly. And stage racers are, are worth taking a chance on, even if they're quite a ways off. This guy's a domestique for the next couple of seasons, but signed at the minimum. Might as well. 17 riders. I've got basically 50,000 left. And still quite a few dossier points. I may or may not go for the remaining guys that are lower potential because I already have enough riders. I might look through what's out there and who's interested and maybe go for one bigger signing as a possibility. Using the filters available to me, we have 37 points left for signing. So looking at all available riders that have 37 or less points in terms of cost that also have 31% interest or higher, which is what is the necessary mark. If they're in the red, they will not sign, period. And this is what we're looking at. A 73 is the best rider available, but all four of those guys from nations that are unavailable to us. 72s are all unavailable to us with the exception of the one dossier we have which is Kevin Rivera so Kevin Rivera is the best rider that I can get my hands on at this point in time so the random search for like a Ben Young Gourmet those guys are completely unattainable either because they have interest that's in the red or they cost too many points. And therefore, this is what we have. So, and I went ahead and signed all four guys for a combined 12300 per month. So only 2300 over minimum salary. And that's pretty dang good. And that's going to give us some more top end as all four guys are a 70 or better overall. All have 3-6 potential. So we have three riders heading out. We have nine new riders coming in. The squad's going to get a lot bigger next season which I'm not a fan of having a ton of riders it's harder to manage morale uh, when you get into that state but with 21 we can easily handle two races at any given time and then even if we were to end up with three we've got it covered uh, you see the overall squad though not necessarily improving star rating is going to be the same as we're going from 15 to 21 yes right now it's got us continental pro but it, uh, I don't suspect in any way shape or form that we will stay there however development of riders could push that kevin rivera has pushed us a little bit higher mugisha was our third man pluto is above him rivera at a 72 is definitely above him so we've added a few tenths to the overall average of the squad but it's still just a 72 so maybe we moved up a spot or two we did we moved up two spots with the signing rivera we went from 37th to 35th but that's not going to be enough. As other riders get signed, we will get bumped down again. So we're, we're almost certainly headed to one more year at the Continental level. But the big difference is this. The squad we have suddenly is a group where you could see we're stacked with riders that are 70 or better next season. Where right now we've really only got a few guys. And we've got quality in a rebay. Aribe has got no resistance, and he's only going to win a sprint, so he's not winning races overall. Uh, Arroyo has not won anything yet, even though he's a decent puncher. And 26 years of age, he's not going to develop, develop much. 
But this coming season, I'm really excited that we've got a lot of young talent, five eights or three sixes that are coming in and joining the squad. And you can see almost all of those guys, all but a couple, are coming in right into the top end of the squad. That's seven of those nine guys are coming in to be seven of the first 11 that we have on the squad overall. So you can see a, a real lift into the top end. And now all it's going to take is one or two or three of those guys to start taking off in development this next year. And it's going to carry us further. Also, this season, we're very... Um, uh, what's the term? Uh, One-dimensional. Or should I say two-dimensional. We have a sprinter. We have some punchers. Next season... GC is going to be a little stronger. Time trialing is going to be much stronger. It was terrible. You can see uh, our our shape is now fairly well-rounded. So we're going to be capable in more than one area. As a Continental team, though, we're going to largely quick sim through the rest of this season and next season. So what to see, I don't know. But what we should see is some development. And then I'm also going to take that natural step in progression and we're going to have a better groundbreaking coach this next season. With a better groundbreaking coach, we should see more rapid development. And if we're getting a little more quality, maybe we should start seeing a few more wins. And if we see a few more wins, unconfirmed, but we might see a little boost in the development department as well. I think we're now on the verge of that takeoff. We kind of got our first wave of upgrades. Now we've got that second wave of upgrades. Now, come next year, we only have one expiring contract, but we still have a good almost 40000 left. So we'll still have plenty of money to, to go out and, and grab guys next season, and then we'll just have rotating three-year contracts from that point going forward. And we'll start to be able to thin the herd, get rid of the ones we don't need as much, and go after bigger, better riders or spend more money to hang on to the guys that actually are developing well and see this team kind of climb into the next tier. For now, though, it's a step. It's a step in the right direction. Mid-September, things are getting interesting. They're getting interesting because we've seen not one, not two, not three, but four riders at the top end level up. And it has raised our profile a bit. Let me start at the bottom of that. Going from a 69 to now a 70 overall. Molebron, the puncher. Still not great, but he's leveled up. And he's hit that mark, that 70 and above now. Going from 71 to 72. Galvez, already a second level up for him. When we signed him, we were worried that he wasn't going to have much potential. That he wouldn't develop much. And yet... He's the only rider, I think, that we've seen get two level ups this season on the current squad. So he looks pretty good. And that's been a nice surprise. Going from a 71 to a 73, Igashan. Now a 75 as a puncher. And stamina resistance are pretty good. And he can climb a little bit. He's got a little bit of speed. He's very well rounded. I mean, everything is a 63 or above. And then Martin Guerrero, also from a 71 to a 73, the stage racer, now 73 mountains, 73 time trial, 72 resistance at continental level, continental level. That's pretty strong. That is somebody who can get some wins. So we are getting better in the sprint, a little more punchy, a little better cobble rating, a little stronger in GC, much stronger in time trial. So we've gotten a little bit better everywhere. And it looks like we have now reached that full three-star mark. And it's almost got us in the mix. Not quite, though. Not quite. And I don't know unless Arroya levels up or maybe Kevin Rivera uh, and sees a significant jump. I don't think we're going to get enough at 43rd. We are still continental just, but still continental. But I think we're poised for an easy run to Continental Pro just through development. 
by next season, or you would think anyway that there'd be three guys that could hit 74 or 75 by next season, and that would probably be enough to do it. In terms of what's still out there, as in the writers that haven't signed yet, there is a 74, a handful of 73s, some 72s. That's enough to to raise some profiles a little bit. That is enough to do some damage, but probably not headed for Continental Pro. Like I said, we're about four spots short, even with one more person leveling up and raising our profile by a few more tenths. Maybe that'll boost us up a couple spots, 41st, 40th even, but I don't think that's going to quite get us up there. And with these guys available, some could end up being at Continental level, and that could you know, potentially drop us another place or two. So maybe we go up one or two, maybe we go down one or two, but I think we're just outside of Continental Pro. But one more season, and we should be seeing Continental Pro. Two Brits on top of the World Championship. The individual time trial, Gegenhardt winning by a half minute ahead of Adam Yates. Venipole rounding out the podium. Surprise win by Jasper Stoyven at the World Championships. It was slightly cobbled. It was slightly punchy. Ultimately sprint, but strange profile. So Stoyven takes win ahead of Mezgech ahead of Sagan and I've pushed all the way to the final race of the season it's the Japan Cup it's October just an episode ago it was June so we've really really just kind of plowed through the season we had some U23 races had some good performances we actually had an overall GC win in one of those by Galvez we had some stage victories and we've just bypassed a number of races but really there wasn't that much on the calendar we're still just a small continental team so the calendar is just nowhere near as busy as it could be we'll see if it's a little busier next season but i have no idea if it actually will be this race we're totally overmatched for Ineos, they're all over this one they have tom pidcock here just behind us he's in 80 overall so we are nowhere near being the top 10 in, in terms of contenders. You can see even at an 81, we drop really, really quick on the climb as Ineos is turning a kind of tempo that is just a bit too much for us. We're a little past halfway, and right now we're just trying to survive and hang on, but the, the breakaway has been... Uh, a dying breed there was quite a few riders and they're down to just nine and uh, you can see some big splits here but also not splits in the way we want it these guys are done but phytosa minus four uh, we have some of the winding down and as much as I don't think Aribe is our guy as a puncher. It doesn't finish in a punchy sort of way. The finish is more of a sprint. So if you can get through the climbs, Aribe is your man. Pidcock, Woods, Quintana are the ones off the front. And here it goes. Six go away. That's top nine. We've got a small chance at a top ten, ten now. To the finish line. Quintana is off. And there's that final climb. George Bennett loses the wheel of Moss Gun, and he's the guy whose wheel I was on, so... That's that's our fate. Top 10 right there. Stanard, that's our chance at a top 10. We might link back up, and for now we have. Just bonking out as we go over the top, but we're okay. 
We'll start to get some recovery heart rates, not too bad as we had already eased off. We're into the last five kilometers. Quintana is off. And starting to recover a little bit. 5k to go. No gel left to use, so I can't get the aid of that. Three point nine, but still no ability to attack. I was hoping for a little bit of yellow bar. It's not happening. We've got a minute to the group behind us, so they're not going to catch us. And I might beat some of these guys. Now it's eight of us. Two k to go, and we've gained a little Assembly separation over the guys behind. Katana has taken the win. Those guys just caught We're back up. Back Woods, Foss, Pidcock. One rider had the ability to attack. He takes off. The rest of us are just going to eke it out for the next position. And just inside the top 10, maybe, for Mullabron. Moscon is maybe going to overtake on the line, but he does not. We get a top 10. Mullabron, ninth place. That entire group, side by side by side. Aru crosses the line last. And Mullabron just ekes out the the whole front of that. It's within a half a bike length, bike length all the way across the road. And he's the first guy to cross, which just gets him inside the top 10. Excellent result. Transfer market now closed. Our final ranking, 44th. We dropped one more spot with the final signings, but no additional level ups, at least not at the top. And so we stay on 73 points, 44th place. We're what five spots off continental pro i think it's a almost certain thing for next season with development plus i'm going to have slightly better coaching i'm allowing that so as we continue to kind of inch our long, inch our way along and progress i think next season we should see it caleb ewan moving on to uae sort of greg anderson to movie star interesting choice there uh, in real life i'd don't know if you would see him move to a Spanish team. Probably not a Spanish speaker, though might be. Adam Yates to Bora Hunsgro. Enrique Moss to Ineos. Ooh, that's a big move. Merlier to Groupama FTJ. I could definitely see that move. Vanderpool to Movie Star. Wow, another surprising move there. They've picked they've had a couple coups, though they also lost their big star. Peloton looking really competitive for next season. You have six five-star teams. You have three more that are very, very close to that. And all the way down to the edge of World Tour, which are going to be the same 19 that we had this season. Four stars and above for all of them. You can see just how close we are to Continental Pro. We're now fully at three stars. It's not even three and a quarter to get Continental Pro. Three and a quarter would get you all the way up to 32nd in the rankings. And then it starts to inch towards three and a half. But that's that's not that far off. So I, I definitely think we're, we're headed for that next season. It's close. Individual rankings, Pogacar winning the World Tour rankings this year. I had a Bernal and Carapaz. Sagan. With the Continental rankings, Hagita, Lutsenko, Super Prestige, Van Aert, Pogacar, Bennett, Roglic, Carapaz, top five. Magisha and Aribe, just two points apart from each other, 341st, 343rd in the rankings. Galvez also making it up there as one of our guys. Enios leading the way in the team standings, Jumbo Visma, Dukenic, the top three. Astana, Quebec Essos, and Bengal, top three in the Continental Rankings. We were 10th, so we got inside the top 10, despite quick simming most of the season. So we're definitely showing signs of improvement. And then in the Super Prestige, 868 points. We are the first team outside of 1,000 scored this year. 31 teams made it in. That's 32nd overall. Definitely not great, but... I would expect next season actually to be similar with a somewhat higher score. I think we might top a thousand, but we'll still be in the low end because yet again, we're going to quick sim most of our way through the next season as we continue to build for the future. 
we'll see something new once we hit Continental Pro, <clears throat> which, I, like I said, is almost certainly one season away now. Victories, technically we claim 16, but the vast majority of those, I'd say 12 or 13 of those, were those national championships that we picked up. But those didn't assign a lot of points, though we did get some for those victories. That's going to do it for this episode and this season. I'll have a few new staff members who will make a slight upgrade there. But otherwise, we are all set to head into a new season. Be sure to hit that like button, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.